this list in our number 10 spot, we have Mona Lisa Perez. Mona Lisa is a YouTuber who used to post makeup and fashion vlogs, but now makes videos more focused on her family and her children. On June 26th, 2017, Mona Lisa and her boyfriend Pedro Ruiz set out to make an extremely dangerous video. They decided that they would put a really thick encyclopedia on his chest and Mona Lisa would shoot a gun at the book. They were expecting the book to be thick enough to stop the bullet, but unfortunately this was a grave miscalculation. The bullet ended up going straight through the book and Pedro passed away shortly after. Mona Lisa was arrested immediately and talk began to swirl about who was to blame. In the end, it was decided that both of them played a role in this terrible day. Mona Lisa was sentenced on December 19th, 2017 to only six months in prison after she pleaded guilty to the charges. She has since served her time and will remain on probation for the next 10 years, as well as receiving a lifetime ban from owning a firearm. She continues to make YouTube videos now with 42,000 subscribers, but tends to get about 80% dislikes on her videos. Moving on in our number nine spot, we have the YouTube user Bill Smith. Bill Smith was part of the QAnon movement and posted a lot of videos that he claimed were secrets that the government doesn't want us to know about. He was an extremely frequent poster, so it raised alarm bells when he just all of a sudden stopped posting videos. He never gave any indication that he wanted to stop posting videos, and his last video honestly made it seem like he had every intention to continue, with him saying he will fight with everything he has and that he was all in. There are a lot of theories about where he could have gone that include him being investigated by Homeland Security or if there were any truth to his claims potentially being taken into custody. People also believe that if his channel did become active again that it would be the government covering their tracks and uploading on his behalf. It's a lot of speculation, but at the end of the day, who is Bill Smith and where did he go? For eight spot today, we have Jay Station. Jay is a Canadian YouTuber who is known for his fake prank videos. He's extremely controversial because of the type of content that he posts. He has been arrested quite a few times and has even deleted his channel in the past before starting a new one. Earlier this year, Jay decided to post a video where he claimed that his girlfriend had died. This was untrue and just an idea used to garner attention and gain sympathy subscribers. Later, the Toronto police showed up at Jay's house to arrest him after that same girlfriend had accused him of a and a with a weapon. Jay has since been released and has begun uploading on YouTube again with the same girlfriend. The pair has claimed to have reconciled their differences and let's hope that this is the end of Jay Station controversies. In our number seven spot, we have VJP Nair. VJ was a YouTuber who was arrested in September for posting videos that allegedly contained extremely derogatory remarks about women. Apparently prior to his arrest, he was actually attacked by a group of women activists who took his phone and laptop to hand over to the police. His channel has since become private since the police need to review all of its content in order to conduct their investigation. There's a lot of bizarre stuff going on in this case, like his potentially false claims to be a film director as well as a teacher and a potentially fake PhD that he claims he has in clinical psychology. He is still under investigation at the moment, but he is facing five years in prison if he is found guilty. In our number six spot today, we have Ahmad and Zainab Hassan. The Egyptian YouTube couple are known for their comedy videos and vlogs and quickly gained success. The pair recently welcomed their first child who they quickly began adding to their videos. Once they began to include their daughter in the videos, people began to get upset over the fact that it really did seem like the baby didn't want to be involved. There was a video where the child was clearly unhappy being posed for it and was crying uncontrollably while the pair just laughed and didn't really do anything to comfort the obviously upset child. There was a video that ended up being the final straw for a lot of people when it showed Zenab with dark paint on her face, which is already upsetting and derogatory enough, but she then clearly terrifies the child who's again crying with what she has just deemed as a prank. The pair has since been arrested and is being investigated for child endangerment, as well as violating Article 96 of Egyptian law, which protects children from threatening situations. They haven't been officially charged yet, but could be facing life sentences, depending on what the official charges ended up being. In our number five spot today, we have Alex and Alan Stokes. The twin YouTubers are known for their prank videos, but last year a video they uploaded has caused quite a stir for the two. Last October, they uploaded a video that was supposed to be a bank robbery prank. They called an Uber and they got in wearing black outfits and ski masks and had large duffel bags and pretended like they had just robbed a bank. 
The Uber driver rightfully denied to take them anywhere and a witness thought that the boys were carjacking the Uber driver and they called the police. Once police arrived on the scene, they approached the Uber driver with their guns drawn. This poor unsuspecting Uber driver really didn't deserve to be caught up in all of this. Apparently shortly after this incident, the boys did a similar prank at the University of California's Irvine campus where police were called again. They were originally let off with a warning, but they have since been charged with false imprisonment as well as falsely reporting an emergency, which could see them each receiving a four year sentence. In our number four spot, we have one that just happened the other day. A Russian YouTuber named Stanislav Reshetnikov has been arrested and is being investigated for the death of his girlfriend Valentina. On a live stream, Stanislav was offered 1,000 US dollars to lock Valentina outside in the freezing cold. Unfortunately, he decided to do this and things really escalated. Valentina ended up passing away due to hypothermia after being left outside. Stanislav continued the live stream even after he had discovered what happened to her and it saw him calling the paramedics, them showing up and pronouncing her dead, and then apparently continued on for another two hours after that. His YouTube account has of course been terminated for a multitude of reasons, and he remains in police custody as they finish conducting their investigation. In our number three spot, we have Pablo Benua and Ray Utami. These Indonesian YouTubers post interview videos with different celebrities on YouTube, but they have recently been arrested and sentenced for what one of their 2019 videos contained. In an interview with an actor, the pair asked about his ex-wife named Farouz. The actor then made derogatory comments about her and disclosed some extremely personal information to which Pablo and Ray were laughing and acting disgusted. Of course, once Farouz saw this, she was rightfully upset and filed for defamation. Earlier this year, Farouz saw some justice carried out when her ex-husband was sentenced to two years and four months, Pablo was sentenced to one year and eight months, and Ray was sentenced to one year and four months. This obviously came as a huge relief to Farouz as she posted on Instagram after all three were sentenced about her gratitude for the decision. In our number two spot today, we have Ryan Stone. In 2014, the YouTuber Ryan Stone led police on an incredibly dangerous high-speed chase that lasted over an hour, traveled over 60 miles, and critically injured a state trooper. Ryan had stolen a vehicle from a gas station that had a four-year-old boy in the back seat. He ended up also stealing two other vehicles and hit a state trooper going 90 miles per hour. It has been said that Ryan may have been under the influence of drugs and was struggling with addiction at the time, which may have possibly led to this erratic and dangerous behavior, but others suggest that some disrespectful remarks he has made about the situation have shown him as being unremorseful. Ryan was sentenced in 2015 to 160 years in prison, but will likely become eligible for probation in 75 years, which would make him 102 years old. In our number one spot today, we have Lenscap Productions. Lenscap Productions was a YouTuber who liked to review anime content. His real name is Trey Eric Sesler, and he quickly became one of the largest anime review channels, but things took an extremely dark turn in 2012. Trey made a plan to kill 70 people at his high school's pep rally. This plan fortunately didn't end up being completed, but Trey did end up killing his own family. He said that he did it so that they would be spared from knowing his ultimate plan that never ended up being carried out. It is an unbelievably tragic situation that ended up giving Trey a life sentence in prison. There were a lot of people who originally thought that maybe he might even receive the death penalty since he lives in Texas where it is legal, but that did not happen. Trey has asked for his parole opportunities to be taken away because he said he doesn't trust himself outside of prison. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Matthew Wayne. We have all had quite the year trying to adjust to the differences we are currently facing, but some people certainly have an easier time adjusting than others. Matthew Wayne is a small British YouTuber who posts videos of himself playing paintball, but he found himself in some hot water earlier this year. For some reason, Matthew decided it would be a good idea to film himself calling in a bomb threat to a hospital. Apparently, he was upset at some treatment he had received closer to the beginning of the global spread of the coronavirus and thought that it was an appropriate way to deal with his feelings about it. During the phone call, Matthew allegedly referred to himself as a YouTuber, made a ton of accusations towards the staff, and apparently also made a racist remark. I can totally understand being frustrated, but this really takes it to another level. Shockingly, Matthew was only sentenced to 12 weeks and a few small fines. Let's hope this was enough for him to have learned his lesson. In our 
number nine spot today, we have Valdrox Studio. But before I dive into this one, please don't forget to like this video because it really helps us out. Valdrox was a YouTuber who was known for his animated characters. He was quickly controversial for his not safe for work content and the fact that he stole a lot of his content from other artists, as well as the fact that he was apparently pretending to be a teenage girl in the beginning while he was actually a man in his 20s. On April 11th, 2019, the man behind Valdrox named David Alejandro Pascal Argueta was arrested after the Guatemalan police raided his home. He was arrested for receiving and selling photos of girls. He would bait people into sending him photos using the guise of collaboration. In December of 2019, he faced trial for his atrocious crimes and received a sentence of three years and five months. Unfortunately, there is a law that gives people who have been sentenced to less than five years the option to pay a sum of money instead of actually serving time. It is pretty upsetting that money got him out of having to actually go to jail, but he has been banned from the internet, which is most certainly for the best. In our number eight spot, we have Austin Jones. Austin Jones was a YouTube musician who started on the platform all the way back in 2007. Last year, Austin was sentenced to 10 years in prison for soliciting underage girls for photos and videos. The complaints started in 2015, and in 2017, he was arrested. He ended up pleading guilty and admitted to using different platforms, such as Facebook and iMessage. The 10 year sentence comes from him pleading guilty on one count of the things that he was accused of. Initially, his YouTube account was demonetized once the allegations came to light, but it was quickly removed entirely following the guilty plea. In our number seven spot today, we have Ruslan Sokolovsky. Okay, this one is kind of crazy. Russian YouTuber and law student Ruslan Sokolovsky is facing jail time because he was playing Pokemon Go in church. He had filmed himself playing the game and a few weeks later was awoken in his apartment by the police coming in to arrest him. Apparently this is a crime in Russia because it is obviously offensive to the people who were there to worship. I completely agree that it was extremely rude and distasteful for him to pull this kind of a stunt, but five years in jail for playing Pokemon Go does seem kind of insane. Like Matthew Wayne called in a bomb threat to a hospital and got a significantly lighter sentence. After Ruslan was arrested, he was on house arrest for a while and is banned from speaking to anyone other than his lawyer and the people who are investigating him. This arrest is seen as very controversial and has a lot of people discussing freedom of speech laws. While I'm not exactly sure if there has been an official sentencing or not, Ruslan is facing five years in prison for this offense. In our number six spot, we have Billy Altador and Ivani Lewis. Billy Altador and Ivani Lewis are the YouTube couple who run their channel called Beam Squad. The pair post videos of them and their family doing challenges and pranks and just talking about their daily lives. Last year, the couple was arrested and charged for fraud, which they of course documented on their YouTube channel. According to court documents, the pair used stolen identities to create fake bank accounts and debit cards. The pair then used personal information that they had stolen in order order to access the Social Security Administration website where they then made direct benefit payments into their new fake bank accounts. There were allegedly 1400 people whose benefits they tried to access and of course some were successful and some were not. After this, the couple then used stolen personal information to file false tax returns and again directed the false tax returns into their fake bank accounts. Of course, they were eventually found out, which is what led to their arrest. They both pleaded guilty and Billy was sentenced to two years, while Ivani was sentenced to one year and one day. And they were also fined close to $94,000 in restitution. Billy has since gone away to serve his time, but because of the fact that they have kids, Ivani will be waiting to serve her time until Billy is back and able to take care of the kids. Their channel continues to grow and gain subscribers and sees around 12 uploads a month. In our number five spot today, we have Daniel Silva. Daniel is a YouTuber and tattoo artist who may be better known for his time on the tattoo competition show, Ink Master. Daniel uploads videos of him tattooing and having conversations with celebrities, influencers, and athletes. Things took a really sad turn for Daniel earlier this year though. On May 10th, Daniel was speeding his 2020 McLaren 600 LT with his friend and famous YouTuber Corey LeBerry in the passenger seat when he accidentally lost control of the vehicle and ended up crashing into a stop sign and tree. This crash ended up taking the life of Corey. Daniel was then arrested and ended up pleading no contest in July. In August, he was sentenced to 364 days in jail as well as five years of probation 
250 hours of community service, and if he fails to comply with any of his probation terms, he'll be facing a four-year prison sentence. Daniel has actually since been released from prison, but his YouTube and Instagram accounts both remain inactive. In our number four spot today, we have Ferdian Paleka. Earlier this year, the YouTuber was arrested after posting an extremely transphobic video. The video showed him handing fake aid packages to trans women that were actually filled with bricks and garbage and rotten vegetables. Of course, this video came under immediate fire for its disturbing content, and Ferdian responded by posting a fake apology video. He was charged with online defamation under the Information and Electronic Transactions Act, which carries a maximum four-year prison sentence, as well as deliberately breaking the law and bringing harm to others, which is punishable by up to 12 years in prison under the same law. After Ferdian's arrest, there were videos posted that quickly went viral of him being ordered around to do embarrassing tasks by other inmates. The videos received comments from his parents about how much it angered them to see their child being humiliated publicly. They are absolutely right because that is not okay, but it sure is ironic. Luckily for Ferdian, the trans women that he victimized have decided to drop the charges against him, so he ended up being released from police custody earlier this year. But of course, not before he made a snide comment that he was more comfortable in his jail cell rather than in his car before driving off. Hopefully this was just an ill-timed joke and he has learned his lesson because things truly could have been a lot different for him. His YouTube channel remains active with just under 300,000 subscribers. In our number 3 spot today we have Andre Pies. Andre is a Russian YouTuber with roughly 800,000 subscribers who posts videos of himself exploring abandoned sites and bunkers. He was arrested in August for allegedly obtaining and spreading state secrets. He has yet to face trial, but he is still in police custody and could potentially receive up to eight years if he is found guilty. It is unclear if Andre plans to plead guilty or not to the charges against him. His lawyer has said that the charges are not linked to any of his social media posts, but some people speculate differently because of the fact that there is a suspicious anonymous comment on one of his Instagram posts. The post was from when Andre gained access to a functioning radar system that Russia uses for its nuclear strike early warning system, and the comment was promising him that big trouble was coming his way, which is super ominous. As of right now, his channel is still up, but it hasn't been posted on since an almost three hour live stream on August 2nd, where he apparently speaks about his legal issues, but unfortunately I can't speak Russian and the English captions aren't so great, so I have no idea what exactly he is saying. In our number two spot today, we have Anthony Locke. Anthony Locke, who's better known as his YouTube name Gas Kings, was a YouTuber who posted car videos. He has almost 700,000 subscribers and his most viewed video has 7.7 .7 million views. In 2018, Anthony went to trial over a scamming scheme. According to the court, Anthony and his partner Ray decided to set up a fake website in order to scam people out of their pensions. The website claimed that you could sign up and invest your pension funds and that half would most definitely be returned back to you, but the other half would be invested into different eco-friendly firms, which ended up not being true at all. Instead, Anthony took the money from pensioners and spent it on expensive cars. If stealing people's money wasn't bad enough already, apparently some of the victims were already in financial turmoil, which certainly just makes the matters worse. Anthony stole close to 1 million pounds and was charged with 23 counts of fraud and 3 counts of money laundering, which landed him a 5 year sentence. In our number 1 spot today, we have German Abraham Loera Acosta. German was a small but mighty YouTuber. He would put out motivational messages for his subscribers to view and was known for his catchphrase, I think the mind is the only thing that limits us. While this may be true and potentially some great advice, things really took a turn for this guy. In February of 2018, the 25 year old YouTuber was part of a group and a scheme that devised a plan to kidnap a woman named Talia Dennis, who is a lawyer, and hold her hostage for ransom. The YouTuber rented a house where Talia was held captive and demanded 2 million pesos in Bitcoin in exchange for her safe return. Well, it didn't exactly work out as planned. The police rescued Talia two days after her kidnapping, and boy am I glad that she was uninjured, although I'm sure that would have 
have been a super traumatic thing to have to live through. All of the men who were involved have been arrested, and just this year, German received his sentence of 50 years in prison, as well as a fine of 500,000 pesos. I'm glad that the kidnapping and ransom of Talia was obviously taken very seriously. Starting off this list at number 10, we have Kenny Beach. His real name is Kenneth Lee Beach, and he was an American YouTuber who posted videos of his hiking trips. He only ended up uploading five videos in total, but interacted a lot with other hiking channels, which helped him quickly gain popularity. Kenny was very proud of the toll his amazing and difficult hikes took on his body. He even said it took him three days to recover from his hikes usually, and that sometimes his toenails would even turn black and fall off. Near the end of 2014, Kenny posted a comment on a video that explained that while he normally enters every single cave he finds, when he found one that was shaped like an M and began to enter it, his whole body began to vibrate, and the closer he got, the feeling became more intense. The feeling really freaked him out, so he ended up getting out of there as quickly as possible. After this comment, tons of other users encouraged him to try and find the cave again and fight the eerie feeling and go inside and to make a video of it. Kenny did exactly this and made a video that ended up being his most viewed video titled M Cave Hike. Unfortunately, he was unable to find the same cave again. Viewers were upset that he was unable to find it and they quickly started pushing for him to look again, but there were a few comments begging Kenny to leave it alone and not to go back, fearing that he would be putting himself in a dangerous situation. On November 10th, 2014, Kenny set out once again to try and find the cave and explained to his family that he would just be going on a short overnight trip. Unfortunately, Kenny never returned home and the search began. His cell phone was discovered at the opening of an abandoned mine shaft, which many viewers thought they recognized from his M Cave hike video. Unfortunately, since then the trail has gone cold and Kenny still has yet to be located. While it is extremely unlikely, I really hope that he is still out there somewhere and hopefully one day we get the answers we're looking for and his family will get their much needed closure. In our number 9 spot today we have Kangua Ren. Before I dive into this one guys, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. Kangua Ren, who is better known as his YouTube name Reset, makes gaming videos and has over 1 million subscribers on his channel. In 2017, he made a video that saw him remove the cream filling from an Oreo, replace it with toothpaste, and then give it to an unsuspecting homeless man who later threw up. When people began to give him backlash for this video, he removed it and instead put up another video of him giving the same man a $20 bill as if that's compensation enough. The judge in this case certainly certainly took into consideration the fact that he had made more than $2,000 on this video alone, so the measly offer of $20 was most certainly insufficient. The court decided on a 15 month sentence and a fine of $20,000 as well as a 5 year YouTube ban. It is unclear if Reset ended up actually heading off to serve his sentence or not, but his channel hasn't been posted on since August of this year. Moving on to number 8 we have the user Paranormal Lana who also was known by the name Alana G. She was a pretty popular YouTuber with over 50,000 subscribers and mostly covered content that was either paranormal, spooky in some way, or real events. On September 3rd, 2015, her channel was just suddenly deleted as well as all of her social media accounts. This quickly became a huge topic of conversation among other YouTubers who were in the same genre as Alana. One person began to point out that just prior to her disappearance from the internet, she had posted a series of tweets explaining that she had a pretty serious stalker incident and she was having to change how her social medias were being managed. Although many cyber sleuths have looked into where she could have gone, no one is exactly certain of what happened to her. If she really did have a stalker, maybe disappearing was the only thing she could do. I just hope that she is safe wherever she ended up. Moving on down to number 7, we have Shima Luan. Shima Luan was an American YouTuber who worked for the channel Super Planet Dolan. It was an animated channel and Shima was one of the most active characters on the channel and was well liked by those who watched. In 2016, in a video called The Future of Planet Dolan, they explained that Shima had suddenly fallen out of contact with the other people on the channel, but the last time they spoke, she was safe, so they didn't suspect anything bad. Of course, a lot of viewers didn't believe this and began to speculate that this was the crew trying to cover up her disappearance. In February of this year, a YouTuber called Scarce Theater made a video taking a look into Shima's disappearance, and one of the members of the Dolan crew left a comment that may have cleared some things up for us. The comment read, 
It's sort of an unsolvable mystery to those who don't know her, because to solve it in a satisfying way publicly, we'd have to invade the actress who played Shima's personal life on a public level. No one who walks away from a job in entertainment wants to be dragged out in the public and shown around. That would be ghoulish. In respect to the privacy of others, all I can say is that this is one of the better videos on the topic. Everyone else fell into trappings of teasing ideas of conspiracy and horror. Truth is, we always had trouble getting folks to separate the cartoons from the actors. This definitely leads us to believe that Shima had her reasons for leaving the channel, but it truly is none of our business. It's easy to forget that some of our favorite creators are also real people who deserve to have their lives kept private, if they so choose. While we miss Shima's content, it's good to know that she is safe. Coming in at number 6 we have the YouTubers who went by Mac Adventures. They were a father and son channel with a destination of Area 51. In 2016 they had posted a video of them finally arriving at the Area 51 border. As they arrive at the border, a couple of agents in full camo gear pull up to them in a truck, get out with guns in their hands, and basically ask them to leave the premises. After the video was posted, they released one more video, and then an extended version of their original Area 51 video, and then and they went totally silent. All of their social media were blown up with people believing that the Area 51 video was fake, which has led some people to believe that they just decided they didn't want to continue creating content because of the negativity, but that's not what everyone believed. A lot of people believed that maybe they had just gone back to Area 51 and tried to get further into the closed off area than last time and ended up getting arrested or maybe even worse. After a few years of people speculating and wondering what happened to them, last year there was finally an update. The son of the duo ended up doing a YouTube live stream where it was finally explained that they had just decided to take a break and it ended up becoming more of a permanent decision than they had originally planned on. While this is sort of an anticlimactic ending, it's definitely the best outcome that could have happened. At our halfway mark in our number 5 spot we have the user Kev Jumba, whose real name is Kevin Wu. Kevin was one of the first YouTube stars joining the platform all the way back in 2006, and by 2008 he was the third most subscribed to channel. Kevin used his YouTube success to go on a season of The Amazing Race, as well as even landing a role in a Hollywood film, Revenge of the Green Dragons. He slowly began to post videos less frequently and eventually made his channel entirely private, moving his focus more to the other aspects of his career. Things took a turn though in 2015 when he kind of just entirely disappeared for a while. People began to get really worried about Kevin and rumors began to swirl about what could have happened and where he could have gone. Luckily we eventually heard from Kevin again, but in an unfortunate turn of events, he explained that the reason for his disappearance is because he had been hit by a car and suffered some pretty serious injuries. The accident left him with a broken spine and a collapsed lung, as well as a number of psychological injuries. He has since been focusing on his recovery and credits his dad for really helping nurse him back to health. While it is obviously extremely traumatic and upsetting that he had to go through this near death experience, we're just glad that he was able to make it through and recover. Continuing on to number 4 we have Spy Kitten TV who was also known as Dasha. Dasha made a lot of videos about the Illuminati and people that she suspected were members. Her last video was posted in July of 2018 and while all of her social media profiles remain up and active, no one has heard from her or seen a post since. It is possible that she just decided to leave the internet life behind, but it is kind of curious that she didn't leave any sort of farewell. People have speculated that she was exposing too many secrets and ended up being kidnapped or silenced by the Illuminati, while others believe that she met some sort of ill fate in another way. I'm sure those in her personal life know what happened to her, and while I wish someone could give us some sort of update, I suppose it really is none of our business unless they decide they want to share. Hopefully she is out there somewhere and maybe someday we'll know what happened and where she went. Coming in at number 3 we have Marina Joyce. Marina was a popular makeup and fashion YouTuber and had a large 2.1 million following. People began noticing that something just wasn't right about her behavior in her new videos, feeling like she was more distracted. This led them to believe that she could be scared or in some kind of danger. Eventually people noticed a gun in the background of one of her videos, bruises on her arms, and people said she wasn't blinking as much, and even swore that they heard her whisper, help me. In 2019, Marina ended up going missing for 10 days. 
days. While she was missing, her boyfriend was tweeting that she was safe, even though the police had an active investigation into her whereabouts, and he tried to shut down any claims that he was acting suspiciously, even though it's super suspicious to say that a missing person is safe when no one knows where they are. After it was confirmed that Marina had been found, she tweeted that she never actually went missing, even though, like I mentioned before, the police were actively looking for her. She claimed that her suspicious boyfriend had been taking care of her. There are a lot of speculations about what happened and why she disappeared for that time, but she claims that she is not in any sort of toxic relationship and just wants her fans to watch her videos and stop worrying. Hopefully she really is okay and fans were just reading into things that weren't actually anything, but it's a super bizarre situation. Continuing on to number two, we have Kaylee Elise. Kaylee was a true crime YouTuber who covered things like missing people and unsolved crimes. In 2019, we did get a heads up from Kaylee that she would unfortunately be leaving the platform due to some health concerns that she was facing, and in a live stream goodbye, she assured fans that she would keep her videos up for everyone to continue enjoying. This is all fine and well, but people got very concerned a few months later. In December of 2019, her entire channel was deleted. It caused a lot of fans to worry about what happened to her and if her health concerns worsened after she left the channel. Unfortunately, there hasn't been an update this year on what happened or what led to the deletion of her channel, but some people have begun re-uploading her videos so that people can continue to enjoy the content. Wherever she is, I hope she's able to take care of her health concerns and focus on herself. Finishing off this list in our number one spot, we have the strange disappearance of Nicholas Sonderegger. Nick was a fairly small but growing YouTuber with 2,000 subscribers and was featured on the YouTube channel Explore With Us. Nick was 28 at the time of his disappearance and was last seen on September 7th, 2018 around 2.30 a.m. He had heard a female screaming outside of his home in Salton Beach, California and went to investigate. After he failed to return home that night, he was reported missing the next morning. Some of his clothing that he had left in was found by the search parties, but it is still unknown what happened to him or where he could be. It's really upsetting that he obviously went to go and help someone who seemed to be in despair and it led to trouble for him. It certainly shows his courage and bravery. There's a $10,000 reward for any information that leads to his whereabouts, so if any viewers have information, please contact the Imperial County Sheriff's Office. Someone somewhere has to know something about where he could be, and I hope that one day his family gets answers and closure. Mm -hmm.